northern Pakistan, where the Himalayan and Karakoram mountains collide in a crushing fist of fierce rock. Yet hardy people came to live in this desolate, inaccessible place, surrounded by heights of magnificence, but ruled by feudal princes who, until their rights were stripped only 20 years ago, lived in their strongholds and palaces, exercising powers that were absolute. They put on it. Centuries of isolation were shattered in the early 1970s when the Karakoram Highway was constructed to cement China and Pakistan's alliance. Thousands of laborers from both countries blasted and shoveled their way through the sheer mountainsides. <laughs> huh? For every kilometer built, it's said that one man died and the road is a thousand kilometers long. The road runs from the capital of Pakistan, Islamabad, to the nearest western province of China, Zanxing, following the track of an ancient silk route, along which heavily laden men had struggled on foot and horseback for centuries. Now it's the people's road, ending isolation and changing lives bringing to all of them tempting goods, needed or not, and ideas of every kind. Province, and then begins to wind upwards through increasingly wild, rugged terrain, climbing steadily towards the mountains, to the river Indus, and then on together through the Karakoram Mountains. Besham is the last town before the highway enters Kohistan, literally, the land of mountains. The last town to provide supplies, beds, food and repairs before the dangers of the high mountains to come. It's a knockabout frontier town and it's growing fast, attracting the quick-witted and brilliantly ingenious Pakistani mechanics who can patch up everything, knock out spare parts on the spot and keep anything on wheels going forever. Like any frontier town, there's money to be made here. Despite its welcoming eating houses and cafes, for the innocent and not so innocent abroad, this can be a dangerous country to travel in. The big business here is guns. In the workshops behind the showroom, gunsmiths will turn out any weapon you fancy for a price. Big gun. Barabo. His name is Barabo. Bandits aren't the only hazard for travelers on the Karakoram Highway. More mundane obstacles, but much more frequent, are the landslides that block the road at regular intervals. The crumbling mountains have always been on the move. Even mild rainfall or light mountain snow can set off mud flows and rock falls. But what can always be counted on is the relaxed attitude of passengers and drivers to setbacks and hold-ups on the road. They're expected anyway. It's the way life is. The highway now passes through areas which had never seen vehicles until a few years ago. But overnight, the arrival of cars and trucks destroyed the traditional relationship between the people and their natural environment. Now, forests untouched for centuries could be felled and sold. For the local people, environmental concerns don't fill stomachs. Now there's money in trees, money ready and waiting to be chopped down, and the road is making it possible.
but the real profits are disappearing down country. ये ठेकेदार आते हैं उधर स्वाद से स्वाद से आकर ये जंगल में जाकर लोगों से सेवर लोगों से ये जंगल खरीदते हैं फिर जंगल खरीद कर ये अपने मजदूर लाते हैं स्वाद से स्वाद से मजदूर लाकर मजदूर के जरिए से कटवाते हैं कटवा कर फिर उधर से मजदूर लाते हैं पहाड़ से नीचे फिर As the highway winds northwards, it passes through ever more barren terrain till it reaches the high walls of the old mountain kingdoms, Gilgit, Hunza, Nagar. A rich... Pilgrims were not the only travelers. The mountain tracks were also used by traders carrying precious goods from China to India, Arabia and Europe. On their way, the trade caravans would pass through the mountain princedom of Hunza, a fertile valley enclosed by high peaks. position meant that Hunza was comparatively prosperous and the Mir or Prince of Hunza was one of the major feudal lords. The lives of these valley people were completely under the control of the Mirs. They survived within a precarious agricultural system which depended on community effort. The Mirs held all the strings and ensured the stability of a system that finally collapsed in 1972 when the government of Pakistan abolished the feudal kingdoms. Today, And with the water, more and more land came into production. The irrigation channels were the first step to greater productivity. The next step was to train people so that they could compete in a market economy. You got a speaker, honestly. The road, however basic and hazardous, is transforming Hunza. But for those who live across the river, it's another story. The road has passed them by. For the people of Naga, in their isolated valley, life is virtually unchanged. But not so long ago, the Shia princedom of Naga rivaled Ismaili Hunza for prosperity and influence. Today, Naga is visibly less developed than Hunza, and Nagaris can see that's because the road bypassed them. Ironically, that was partly because Nagaris feared that its construction would bring in outside labor and disruption. Now it's clear, Naga has been left far behind. North of Hunza lies Shimshal, one of the remotest valleys in the area, so inaccessible that the Mirs of Hunza would banish offenders to it. For the people who live here, a link with the main road is not a question of morality, it's a necessity. When uh, 